How many of you guys fasted this week? I tell you, it was a tough, rocky road for me. I'm going to have to reset myself and do it again. But uh, I tell you what, failing, you can, le- you can learn something from failing too, guys. I, I can't explain it, but you can learn something from failing. You really can, and you should. You should learn something from failing. And uh, what I'm learning this week is that my problem is a lot more serious than I thought. Fasting is a good way to measure yourself. Can I get an amen if you heard what I said out there? Fasting is a very good way to measure yourself, to see where you're at spiritually, to see where you're strong, to see where you're weak. And when I say strong, I mean by the grace of God. Being strong in grace is how we do anything. But this week taught me something because uh, I, kind of, I guess I kind of got spoiled because this year I fasted more than I've ever fasted in my life with success. I mean, I went two weeks, no food. I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to make, make a point here. I must have fasted th- four or five weeks this year already successfully. Not, not in a row, but, you know, all, all together. But this last week I failed miserably. And I'm depressed. And I almost didn't want to do the Bible study. I'm really sad. I uh, feel like crying, sorrow, just disappointment. And I'm th- looking at my life going, how is it possible for me to do so well at the beginning of this year and then... Uh, it looks so reckless and foolish and weak here this past seven days. And, you know, really meditating on the true answer and not deceiving myself, not, you know, making things up. I, I didn't want to get into the details of, of my failure too much because I don't want it to be an excuse for anybody else. Listen, you cannot use anybody else's failure in your life for yourself. You can't look at somebody else and go, well, they didn't do well. It's okay for me to fail. You know, that, that's a sad thing uh, to justify your own, you know, mistakes and weaknesses because somebody else did. That, that's not going to fly for God and you're going to give an account still. So if you failed, it's your responsibility. It doesn't matter if other people failed or succeeded. It's, it's your responsibility to do your vow and your commitment to God and live faithful to God. You know, I, I'm just going to you know, take some time to really meditate. Uh, what do we do we, when we go through these cycles? We go up and down, we go up and down and... Uh, you know, some of us are pretty steady and steady flowing, and, and uh, that's a beautiful thing, and we get that way, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, by the grace of God, we'll come out of it. We come out of these times when we are failing and doing poorly. We have to, because really you can't stay in that condition. You cannot stay in a condition where you're performing poorly, faithfully and responsibly to God. You can't, because it just leads to more and more destruction it leads to more and more evil, devastation, catastrophe, and eventually death. That's where all sin leads to some degree. And even God will put to death his children to stop them from continuing in sin. We see that in the scripture. I know if that if you're hearing that for the first time, uh, it's in the Bible. God has let people die because he didn't want them to continue in their sin. And it's not permanent, perpetual condemnation to hell. It's just judgment and consequences of, and chastisement. And I don't want that either. I don't, I don't want to die because of my, uh, I need to be chastised. I want to, I really was praying this morning to God. I said, Lord, I really want to die, uh, you know, in the tribulation faithfully to you. I'd rather die from starvation. I'd rather die from getting my head chopped off. I'd rather die from going, running in the woods and starving to death. Anything other than from sin. Can I get an amen if you're with me now? I've said enough about this. And, uh, you know, this is not my first rodeo. This is not my first time, you know, feeling depressed. And, you know, I could get rid of the, I could get rid of the depression real quick. If I ran over to Mr. Doctor, psych med doctor and got myself some pills, some feel good, happy pills, but I'm going to deal with the depression and the anxiety and the problems and conflicts the way you're supposed to through prayer, naturally and spiritually with God. Otherwise, you're never going to grow up, and I don't want to be stuck on no pills. Yeah, I'm very, very upset, very sad, very depressed. But I also know the answer, and I know what I got to do. And if you get old enough to be in your 50s or beyond, you start to learn, you know, how to fix things through grace, and and you've been down those problems before, and, you know, I'm not a kid anymore, you know. But, you know, we're really really sad, sad is that when you make childish mistakes when you should not be doing that anymore that's what's really got me aggravated right now some of the stuff is 
You know, I know better. I know better than to watch uh, some of the movies I've been watching. 